for this text session, I could show you some of the ways where if you use HTML, add text content to your website. Obviously, you know if you get any website without having text on the page. Naeem will they take the past information to our viewers or even teach them how to use the website. So knowing how to write text for HTML is a very important thing. We don't already examine two text elements, which is the H1 element and the paragraph element. But if you don't use Microsoft Word or any other Word editor before, you will not say H1 will be the only heading where we get. H1 is the biggest main element for any page. It will be like headline for newspaper. La in will they take the pass across maybe the title to or the main message of our website. Most websites, they get only one H1 to show the focal point of the website. Then they go on get other H2 elements to show some other edits. We'll say they're they more important than H3 and H3, they're more important than H4. Usually after H4, anything will go right in a paragraph. Where will they write with the P tag? This structure of H1, H2 and paragraph, they're very important. Not only for your readers, but also for the browser and for what we they call screen readers. Screen readers now waiting people they use to assist them to read waiting day on your page. So if they look say okay, if people they look them, they go fit tell. But if all these screen readers and applications they look them, them no be humans. So they're gonna need you to structure them appropriately for them to be able to understand how your website they. So after we use H1 and H2 and paragraph. Another thing we will need now to structure everything the right way. We go do quick exercise for this part of the lesson to show you. Which I go first do now say I go add new H2 for this place. Then I go come copy this H2 and this paragraph. I go add them down. To copy one line and add them down for VS code, you go use Alt, Shift, and Down Arrow. You go press Shift, Alt, and this Down Arrow at the same time. You go help you copy anything with the one line to the next line. So you go feel easily just edit them and duplicate them. All of these small, small shortcuts for VS Code, they're very important. To make sure say your coding will be faster. Now, after we add this H2 and paragraph, I go add another H3. One of these things they do like to show you the difference between these elements, but we will also use them later. So though they follow along and they code them as I decode them. Now we go add this new H3 and another paragraph. More we save our work and see them for the browser. You see say for the browser, you they see the differences between this H1, H2, and H3 and the paragraph. Now because say even the browser understand the different default size between H1, H2, and H3. But when you start to build your real website and you start to write CSS, all these default size with this browser, they help you apply. It no go matter because my you will go style your H1 and H2 by yourself. In fact, for CSS, if you just don't make paragraph they big or small, if you feel do anything with CSS, but even though if you use your CSS, change the sizes of your H1, H2, and paragraph. It's still day important for you to use the right headings so that screen readers, bots, browsers, and SEO crawlers go feel know the hierarchy of your website. Now, may we move on to this new section. This new thing we I want to introduce to you now, what do they call HR, horizontal rule. Now, horizontal rule will take the add lines between sections for HTML. Again, for CSS, you go fit do this one with different kind of style. But for now, for our HTML class, we go use this HR. So just add HR to the first section to differentiate between your headings and your first section. Then we go add another HR to differentiate between the first and the second section. I will just copy this one now. Bring her, come down. One thing where I want to you know, now say, 
HTML, no they recognize white space. What it be white space? White space, my all this space where would they live for our program? Let's say I press enter now, I press enter, I press enter, I press enter. You see the space don't they for my program. If you go to website, you feel the expect send me all this space they there too. But in logo they there. Because HTML, they automatically remove this white space. Evil VS code, where I they use as my code editor. If I press save now, you will see it will help me remove all of this white space. Because of the formatter and because the HTML, no, they honor this white space. So if you want to add this space or if you want to move to new line for your HTML code, not be enter, you go use DOM, not be this kind of space, you go use DOM. One thing where you feel use now, BR elements. This BR elements now with a column line break. Now you go use separate one line from another. And it did important to know, say, this BR, you see, say, you know, get opening and closing tab. You know, just write opening BR and then close out with name BR. No, now just one tag, BR, and it will help you add the break. Again, you should say, after we add this BR, have it to see the under the paragraph tag. All these sentences where I they write now now still on that paragraph a day. No be say we they add another line or another element. This BR now inside the paragraph. I gotta tell you the difference between what you would call block level elements and inline element, which is another thing where you must know for HTML. So what is the block level elements? Block level elements, like elements where they occupy their own block. By occupy their own block, I mean say they dig on their own line. For instance, all of these tags and elements we don't they use, all of them are block elements because see the this city is adding. You dig your own line. See this paragraph, you dig your own line. If you add another paragraph inside this paragraph tag, you know, go stay inside that line. It will create its own line. Now, why would they call them block level elements with that? Because they, they occupy their own blocks. The opposite of block level elements la in line elements. In line elements, more they form their own block. They know they return, like say you press enter, they start new line for Microsoft Word or Docs. They base be inside the block where you add them because they don't get the ability to form their own block. That the difference between block and inline elements with that one inline element really go look that emphasis. With the right term as EM. And if they write up inside an existing block, because again, there will be block level element on yourself. But if you use that modify. Text we you don't write inside one block. For instance, inside this paragraph element. Let's say I want I write one word. I go use this emphasis, wrap them around the word where I want to emphasize, and it go change down inside the block. Nobody say it go create new block. Another inline element now strong. This strong element might just like emphasis element, but instead of to the emphasize on like this, it will make them very very strong now i know so you don't understand the difference between inline and block level elements you say i've done they go far for html see our website see where you do you don't they make sense by the time we will finish this course we go see say we go don't make websites will say you don't they all right then we go come move on to our css here we go use beautify the website the next thing we will take a look at now, what will they call HTML entities? What will be HTML entities? HTML entities now code we will feel used for our HTML to achieve some symbols. Where we say you must feel used naturally for the code. Maybe because it clashes with normal symbol, we will they use for other things for HTML, or because we they make a more compact. One thing where we they use to write HTML entities like ampersand. So if you see anything for your HTML code, which starts with ampersand, you could not say that like HTML entities with that. One common example of HTML entity now like less than and greater than sign. Now, you know, say for our HTML code to write any tag and any element, 
we go first open the tag with less than. Write the element like P or H1. Close them with greater than. Then we go do the same thing for our closing time. So if you want to write normal greater than and less than, the program could think say would you try open tag and create element. So to really write ordinary greater than and less than for our code, we go use HTML entity will be and LT for less than and and GT for greater than. Another one now NBSP, we will they call no breaking space. No breaking space. Now we take the add space between the same line. Remember, say I tell you, say which you add space normally for your HTML code. The editor way they use like VS Code will help you for my time. It go remove the space, and even the HTML at the browser know they recognize spaces, so they know it will recognize your space. But if you really want add space between words on the same line. You go use this entity will be and nbsp again you will close them with semicolon as with a close all entities so if you write and nbsp semicolon you may say you the and no breaking space may i add them to some of these paragraphs where we don't get may i can show you for our browser i will add one nbsp to this line i will add two nbsp to this line and i will add three nbsp to this line now, maybe we'll check them for our browser. You should say the space is done there, there. But if I just press normal space to add these spaces, you know, go work because HTML know they recognize white space. So to add white space, we'll use this HTML entity and NBSP semicolon. May I use less than and greater than for our footer? May I tell you how you hit take user, right? Simple copyright attribution for your website now i go scroll down i go add and lt then i go add another entity we would call and copy this and copy now to add copyright symbol then i write the name you feel write the name of your own website or if you feel write your own name anything we want to take you do the copyright you go write down for you then we'll call close on with greater than and gt after this one, now the next thing we will take a look at now other common tags. We say you feel used to add some context to your HTML code. The first one, now, application. You go right time I say they open normal tag less than ABBR close the tag with greater than. Then another less than ABBR close the tag with the forward slash. Now, if you get any word for your page, will be abbreviation like this word we I use for here. You feel use this ABBR. To provide context as to the full meaning of this abbreviation, I will go down and say you will add title attributes after this ABBR. Remember attributes who I tell you, like the language attributes, lang attributes we use for our HTML tag. You will add attributes for the opening ABBR tag. We will tie to. Now here you will specify the full meaning of this abbreviation. Now may I show you another one? What will they call address? This address. Now it would take the indicate, say, what it would be right for you. Now address. Why we can't use this address now? Because the first of all, it will help us format our address differently. Again, it features the default format with CSS. But to show screen readers and put and to give the website more context as to wait till day your page, you good to use the right tags for instance this address now i feel like that this type of that and you will work but the browser and you bought the computer and who will get context as to what in this part of the website they about i mean that is very good for your browser to understand between the your page now say you go help you serve your users better you go help you make your seo better and it will help you make some optimizations where they don't configure the browser to make. It will help you do them better. But if you know show and say the address, you know go do them the right way. Now, merely move on to comment. I want to show you how if you take right comment for your programs. Why regards right comments for our program? You see, as programmers, any code where you go right, it good to they give up the proper comment and not totally the right comment everywhere, like say you just discover a new toil. But for important places, it goes to the leave comment. Say, okay, now we till I reach I achieve this. Now we till this line of code, they do be this. 
or now we say either act in the future with this. First of all, it will help you yourself understand your code the next time. You fit in say, ah, mommy writes this code. I will understand that if I open this file again. But trust me, if you they do plenty of things and you leave the code for a long time and you can't come back, if you all represent and leave yourself right, you go confuse you say, ah, who write this kind of code? But if you leave the right comments for the right places, you go feel understand later. And then another thing, if you they work as a programmer, you know go they work alone. Now, if they work as part of a team, it good to the right be correct comment for your code so that other people for your team or other right developers will, will work on the same code in the future. Go feel no wait see this person they try to do for you. That how we take the ad comment for HTML videos. At this comment now, even though it is inside your index.html file or any other file, the computer go see them, but the people where they browse your site no go see them. And the developers where they open this file directly go see them. You feel also check the comments and the entire source code of your HTML page for your browser. For Chrome, you go right click, then you go click inspect. This one will show you your HTML source code. You feel also click control U. You feel do this thing for any website. Just open the website, type control U or inspect, and you go see the source code of the website. But when you do this one, no overglam because some of these websites, they're very complex. If you didn't make you, they discouraged. No, they're discouraged. Some of the codes will really go see for this inspection. Not be even called group, say the developers themselves, right? For instance, for this, our code now, you go see, say, live server. The two, where would they use? They make this code go live for our browser. If they show us some code, some JavaScript code for you. If you use React framework or TypeScript or any other libraries and framework where you would use, no loss to go the exact code inside your program. For the next chapter, we go enter list concepts for HTML. How will we take make lists and what will you do with these lists?